Let's get it started in here. I bet you haven't thought of that song in a while, right? And you're going to listen to it after this. I bet you are. All right. So um, welcome back to, what are we calling this? Keyshawn's Quarantine Unhappy Hour? Because I'm not happy. Right. So I had a thought the other day. I only get one per day. Um, and I tweeted something about like my favorite margarita and my friend Caitlin asked for my recipe, so I gave it to her. And I thought, well, of course I can do a recipe video. But the thing is, the margarita is so well known, you know, you already know what it is. And instead of a normal video, I thought I could give it a little extra love because it's such a classic. So I'm gonna do an informative thread where every video is one ingredient in my preferred margarita. So that's what we're doing. Also, if you're looking at the state of my hair, stop that, okay? I'm aware that I look like busted Ronald McDonald. I'm aware that with the length that we're getting, it looks like I'm going Super Saiyan. It is okay. When we can do barbers again, I'm there, all right? So for now, look here. Enjoy this little thread. Okay, so as you well know, the first ingredient in a marg is the tequila, or <laughs> the mezcal. I'm always talking about how I prefer mezcal to tequila, and that's because I do. But at the moment, I don't have mezcal. You actually watched me run out of mezcal when I made the existential, existential dread. If you remember, if you go back and watch, I ran out while I was making that. And it turns out mezcal is like not cheap. So unless one of y'all wants to open your purse and give me a dollar, more than a dollar actually, uh, there will be a while before I have more mezcal. But it's okay because I just bought tequila and I want to set the record straight about my relationship with tequila. I do not dislike tequila so much as I just really like mezcal. So let's get that straight. Okay, jot that down. But when I do use tequila, I like to use reposado tequila, which means rested uh, in Spanish, and so it's aged, but for less than a year, so like between a month and a year. Um, if it were aged more than a year, it'd be an añejo, which which literally means aged, but not aged in the sense of a person, aged in the sense of like a, like a vintage, you know, like like a, like a liquor. And so Reposado has some of the bright citrusy notes you'd expect in a unaged or blanco tequila, um, but it's also got some of the more mature, oaky, caramely notes that come out in the aging process. So it's right in the middle, which makes it good for sipping, good for mixing, good for whatever you want to do with it, really. So the first ingredient in my preferred marg is two and a half ounces of either mezcal or reposado tequila, okay? The next thing is going to be orange liquor. So stick around. Okay, so continuing right along, in most margaritas you'll find the orange liqueur component is like a triple sec or something in, it's got that curacao type of vibe. I really prefer something that's cognac based. So the most popular example of that would probably be Grand Marnier. <laughs> French degree, look at that, Grand Marnier, okay? Um, but that's actually quite expensive. And so I, when I was buying the stuff uh, for this, I was talking to, to the folks at the liquor store. It's my favorite alcohol purveyor in, in the whole city. Um, I'm there very often. And they were saying that they have this, uh, which is a cognac-based orange liqueur. And it's also French. It's made by Ferrand, the, the cognac makers. Um, I, on my big map of France over there, I like found where where it is. I mean, it's in, it's in cognac. But anyway, um, so it's made by Ferrand, and it's Mathilde Exo Orange, and it's uh, it's a little bit cheaper than Grand Marnier. This was like $30, um, so it's a little cheaper than Grand Marnier, and I taste tested it when I got it, and it's actually quite fantastic. So, uh, but if you could use Grand Marnier if you have that, but I just went for this like slightly cheaper alternative. Uh, but so the next ingredient is one half ounce of a cognac-based orange liqueur, such as Grand Marnier or this Mathilde Exo, whatever you got. 
So we are entering the home stretch, my lovelies. We are getting there. This is not a complicated beverage. So the next thing is limes and simple syrup. I'm going to combine those kind of into one situation. Um, the non-alk components. So uh, lime. I mean, <laughs> juice some limes. Um, I usually, I'm, in the recipe when I write it down, I'm going to call for like one to two, I'm going to say two ounces. But really, it's totally to taste. I mean, if you like it tangier, do more. Less tangy, do less. You know, all that. Um, zest the limes first. We're going to use the zest when, for the rim of the glass. And I'll tell you how that goes in, in the next one. But zest first and uh, before you juice. If you juice before you zest, you have a really hard time getting the zest. This would also be the time when you want to think about um, if you're going to do, like, flavors. Because... Simple syrup is one part water, one part sugar, dissolve, and that's literally it. Seal it in the fridge up to 30 days. Boom. Put it in drinks, put it in like sweet tea, put it in, you know, all kinds of stuff. Um, but you could add flavors to it. You could add like mint leaves, jalapeno, like cinnamon sticks. I mean, you could get wild with what you do, okay? And then um, at the same time, you could also do at the stage like other fruits besides lime. So with the lime juice, you could, if you have a muddler, you could like put your lime juice uh, in your simple and then you could muddle some raspberries or something like that, strawberries. I really love um, like a good pomegranate mark. So if you had grenadine, you could, you could have that in here too. Um, that's delicious. So this is a time to think about if you want to do flavors, this would be a great place to do it. So either muddle it with your lime juice or infuse your simple syrup or something like that. So one ounce of simple syrup and uh, two ounces of lime juice, but it's really to taste. So we've arrived at the crux of this experience. This is the part where I actually make the drink. So this is just a shaker uh, with some ice in it. So I'm just gonna add everything we talked about. So this is the simple syrup, uh, one ounce. Next, uh, this is the reposado tequila, two and a half. So we're just gonna pour that. And let me talk about what I rimmed the glass with. So I mixed a couple of things. Tajin, which is a chili lime salt. That was two, and then here's the half, which is a chili lime salt. And then the zest, because I remember I told you to zest the limes. Two and a half. The zest from the limes. And there's a third ingredient that you don't have to do. A half ounce of the uh, orange liqueur, cognac base. Um, there's a third ingredient you don't have to do. I'll tell you about it. It's kind of wacky. It's called sal de gusano, which is Spanish for worm salt. And it's called that because it's salt, the lines, it's salt mixed with uh, ground up chilies and don't scream, the larvae from the worms that live in the agave plant. Agave is the plant that's used to make tequila, mezcal, and spirits in that family. And so you mix all that up and you get sal de gusano. Um, I have it because my friend gave it to me as a uh, gave me, gave me some mezcal as a gift, and you see sal de gusano sprinkled on orange slices and eaten uh, with mezcal. You don't have to use that though; it's spicy, like it's actually spicy. Um, so then you just shake it till it's frosty on the outside. transfer. So I want to show it to you. This is what it looks like with the rim and everything. Um, in terms of flavor notes, I mean, you can imagine because I used the reposado instead of a blanco tequila because I used the cognac based orange liqueur instead of a triple sec. It's just richer, a little bit richer. Um, it's got more of that sort of caramely thing. When I say caramely, I don't really mean the inside of like a candy bar, you know. I mean caramel in the, in the true sense of like burnt sugar. It tastes warm, you know. Um, it has that going on. It's just a little bit, a little bit sweeter than your traditional marg, I think, because it's just got a little bit more of that rich 
mature thing. Um, you could always add more lime juice to kind of offset that. That part is the taste, like I said. Uh, so here's what it looks like. And yeah, oh, I name everything, right? Everything has a name. So this one is going to be the mm, 2020 has been the longest decade margarita. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed this. I'll do it again when I get inspiration. Thanks for watching.